pounds among super middleweights. Eli Augustama, originally from Haiti, fights out of South Florida, taking on the unbeaten from Sacramento, Brandon Gonzalez. There is Brandon Gonzalez will be facing this guy, Eli Augustama, 26-year-old. Miami-based pro. He is self-managed, no promoter. Teddy, he takes fights on short notice, but he shouldn't be intimidated in a spot like this against an unbeaten. No, he really shouldn't be when you look at his track record. He's fought, this will be his fifth straight fight with an unbeaten fight, and he finally broke through, broke the ice, if you will, by beating his last undefeated opponent in his last fight. So he's not intimidated by the zero at the end of their records. He's been there before. And that win against Danielle Livingston was right here in California, his first fight in California. So he's come out west and had success before in a spot like this. And he is opposite the man being introduced right now, 28-year-old Brandon Gonzalez, 15-0-1. Hasn't fought in eight months. Coming off an October 2011 split decision win in his last fight. That was a step up against Ozzy Duran, and he is trained by the very talented Virgil Hunter, the BWAA's trainer of the year. And Teddy, he also trains our headliner, Mike Dallas Jr. So a little bit of a juggling act tonight for Virgil. Time to see how the fighters will keep their edge. Brought to you by Just For Men Mustache and Beard. Well, let's go with the undefeated Gonzalez. What do you say first? get inside and do some work on that long slim body and for Augustama or well, use your long jab and legs to frustrate him Daniel Sandoval is the referee they're scheduled for eight this is in a dressing room I want a good clean fight obey my commands at all times and protect yourself at all times touch them up let's go to war so we told you when we came on the air that there was a mad rush in the 20 minutes leading up to airtime to get this ring straightened out and tighten the ropes as best as possible. Uh, we talked to the referees. They said, listen, we're going to give it a go. They're a bit loose, but as long as it's not putting the fighters in harm's way, we will fight on. Hopefully you know, we'll not have an interruption to that. I think that should be part of the responsibility of the commission i mean these things should not be put off to the last minute where we're in this kind of situation where we were threatening or threatened not to be ready to go on when television was ready and you can hear the clanging of this floorboard so obviously this ring is not in top shape and again i'm going to point a finger at a few people but i'm going to point a finger at the commission in any other sport, you made a good point earlier, Joe. I mean, the Yankees are playing the Mets tonight, and a guy who has to put the lines down, see whether or not it's a fair or a foul ball, well, that was done at the appropriate time. Why was this ring not set up and checked out at an appropriate time? It's absurd. You're in a business here where guys are putting themselves on the line. They're going out there, they're entertaining fans, they're entertaining our fans tonight and they should have the best conditions possible. A commission should not allow this. It's absurd that we are in this position and the fighters are in this position. Again, for you at home, if you hear that clanging and banging around, oh, it's not your TV sets. It's the ring floor. Brandon Gonzalez in the dark blue and white. He's been working with Victor Conti. Of course, Victor Conti, best known in sports history as being a central figure in the Balco scandal from years past, and now has been providing nutritional supplements to many pro athletes, many boxers. Andre Berto, of course, making headlines in the sport recently for all the wrong reasons. And the question that I asked our people to ask the commission, and I thought it was the right question on what you're touching on, is seeing how Victor Conti is working with Gonzalez, and Victor Conti was the guy who was involved in the Balco scandal with the PEDs with Barry Bonds and all the baseball players back when, and since he was working with former world champion Andre Berto, and Berto was found positive with PEDs, and it canceled his fight with Ortiz. Because of that, you would have thought that maybe they test Gonzalez for PEDs tonight. And the commission was asked, and they said, no, we're not testing. Matter of fact, we're not testing anybody. And I don't know that I find that acceptable. 
under the conditions, the circumstances we just talked about, where the sport has been found with people dirty recently, I would think that maybe it was an appropriate time to do some testing tonight with Victor Conti's name involved with Gonzalez. Both August Stamba and Gonzalez having success on the inside here at the end of round one. Some pretty good body shots we saw. Well, what happens when you have two tall guys giving up their height? Well, you have a phone booth fight, and that's good fuzz. And right there, the better of it is Gonzalez with the right uppercut, and then Augustama comes back with the left hook on top of the head. Gonzalez overcoming a hamstring injury back in January. Missed six weeks of work and got back to business with the trainer of the year, Virgil Hunter. He was coming off an October 2011 split decision win in his last fight. Tough spot for Gasama, who lost four of his last five. And to Joe, if it wasn't for a split decision win in his last fight, he would have lost his last five. In fairness, though, two of his losses were close. One was a split decision, the other a majority decision. And as we said at the top, four of them were two undefeated fighters. And so he's not being put in tonight. easy. Yeah. Up against a 15 0 oh, 1 fighter here in Gonzalez. Some inactivity for Augustama. Go back four fights. He was off one year and three months. Coming in tonight, his heaviest weight in almost three years. Gonzalez coming in, his heaviest weight in almost two years. Good body work that time by Gonzalez. Touch him on the belt line. Again, neither guy looking to use that, that height. Gonzalez, the more physical guy, the guy more suited for the inside. He's in the geography that he belongs, that he should be in, but not the case for Augustama. Oh, he's six foot two. Tall, wiry, thin. You want to protect that thin body, not expose it. He's exposing it with the inside fight with Gonzalez. Again, that right hand may have strayed a bit low. Did land the uppercut on the inside to Gonzalez as well. You know, it's just unnatural for a guy like August Sama, who's tall and thin and he's got long arms, to shorten those punches up and work inside. And the guy with the little shorter arms, Gonzalez, is doing a little better in there. Another right hand to the belt line, and it Great. earns a warning from Daniel Sandoval, the referee. I think the most important thing, and you see it right here, is that Gonzalez is just more comfortable inside, Joe. He knows he belongs there. He knows he has an edge there. I can't say the same for the man in red, Ogusama, doing a little grabbing. Definitely not as comfortable on the inside. Fox. Ten seconds. Reached him with the right down. hand that time. And back to the inside. It was a flush left hand from Augustama, and Gonzalez fired back. Joe and Teddy back with you in San Jacinto, California, our first outdoor show of the year. Our main event tonight will be Javier Castro against Mike Dallas Jr. That's still to come. I want to show you the jab numbers through two rounds. Teddy, you touched on the fact that neither guy really comfortable on the outside. Gonzalez happy to be on the inside, but the six foot two Augustama, only three jabs connected so far through two rounds. You look at the style of Gonzalez always wanting to go on the inside what i'm about to say would be no shock to you he's been involved in quite a bit of head clashes he's been involved matter of fact in three fights where they bang heads cuts have come from it and one of them resulted in a technical draw so a little bit of a head clash alert in this fight gonzalez cut over his left eye in his last fight so we'll see whether or not that becomes a factor in this fight good work from the jab now of gonzalez been eight months since gonzalez has been in the ring you'd expect to maybe see a little rust early haven't seen that bad news for augustama Wide right hand. 
Michael Gonzalez unable to fill that gap. Stop! Break. Come on, break clean now. Box. Stop! He's holding that now. left Don't arm of Gonzalez. Don't yeah, Sandoval the having to get a little bit more involved. Talking about the jab numbers earlier, more important and more noticeable that they're missing from August Simon's point of view. Not using that long jab to keep that man, Gonzalez, from getting there. Gonzalez scored well with the left hand moments ago. Don't be holding in there, huh? Don't hold in there. There's an uppercut that split the guard. Now back to the inside against August Stamma. That's where he's had most of his success early on today. Stop. Break. I, I will the ropes. say that Break clean, huh? to Get a certain off. extent, fights are about geography. Box. Who fights in a geography best for them? Yeah. All right. Tonight, no contest right? so far. Okay, come on. Box. Gonzalez is exactly where he wants to be, in Stop. close. Right? Sandoval, the referee, had given the warning to Gonzalez about Fine. keeping his punches up. He asked fix August Stamma. Come on, we got to fix his trunk. It's pretty hard. He didn't even have him on the table, right? Let's do what you mean, Mr. Dorman. Let's go. He asked August Stamma if he was all right. August Stamma said yes. And then when Gonzalez right, went on, to re-engage with the fight, Eli Box. looked at the referee as if to say, I need a break. So he gave him the moment to fix the trunks. 10 seconds, huh? Come on, punch out of that. Let's tell you what you're in store for in our main event, and it is a good one. The 27-win veteran Javier Castro will be taking on Mike Dallas Jr. There is the veteran 140-pounder Castro, who has won three straight. Let's give you a closer look at the 26-year-old, originally from Mexico, but now fighting out of El Paso, Texas. Hey, he's trained by Yuri Orcas Gamboa's dad. Carlos Gamboa, the father of the recent world titleist. His nickname is Zorro. Castro's got a lot of style. In fact, he comes down to the ring, often dressed like a fictional character, has an aggressive style, has power, likes to pressure his opponents and wear them down. And he told us yesterday that is exactly the plan tonight against Mike Dallas Jr. Teddy, once again, uh, for those who didn't join us at the top of the hour, your thoughts on tonight's main event, Castro and Dallas Jr. I think it's a good competitive fight, and like the NBA Finals, I think it comes down to can one team, in this case one fighter, out-physical the other. Miami Heat definitely out-physical and out-matured the Oklahoma City fun Thunder, and obviously LeBron James, well, he got to where he wanted to get to on the inside. He out physical Durant. And for Castro to win tonight, well, he's got to do the same thing. Get to the paint, get inside, and out physical Dallas. He's not going to outspeed him. He's not going to outbox him. And for Dallas, well, the same thing that Durant didn't do enough on. Hit some jump shots on the outside. Gonzalez stepped up in class of opposition in his last fight with a good veteran. Ozzy Duran won a split decision. Some people thought he lost it, but the most important thing, very similar to Dallas, Stop. when he had that two-fight losing streak, but the second one, majority decision. I thought he won the fight. He matured in that fight, and I think Gonzalez got a lot out of his last fight with Duran. Found out some things about himself, and that's what you need to know when you're going in this ring. How you handle a step up what you can depend on that right hand was just glancing moments ago now gonzalez came with the jab upstairs then went to the body with the right hand put a three punch combination together after that as the ropes are tested that time but they do hold augustama in the ring remember earlier tonight the crew here was trying to tighten up the ropes the referees were set to hold up action until the ring was satisfactory for the fighter's safety right there you saw an example of it as augustama almost came through those two middle white ropes gonzalez is just dominating augustama augustama is doing nothing but taking stop i mean it's enough that Gonzalez has been Box. dominating for the first three rounds on the inside. Now he's dominating everywhere. On the outside in spots this round, 
and obviously continues on the inside. I was really touching that belt line. Then the uppercut got the best of him. There's a right hand from Gonzalez as well, sneaking through. What Gonzalez should do, not that there's any demerits on him, but if I was a, being a teacher here, only demerit I would say is take a little step back on the inside instead of smothering yourself or allowing Augustama to smother you. Take a little step back here, create a little room and throw that uppercut. See, right now, Gonzalez is not creating room. Watch your head. That's where you move your feet, Joe. The point to move your feet just a little bit back. Move your punches up a little bit. Another warning for those punches straying Stop. low. As they come to the end of round number four, a round in which Brandon Gonzalez dominated the action Break. against Break. Eli Augustama. More to come, halfway point. Time. As we said in the last round, and you're going to see it now, Gonzalez, complete domination where he wants to be on the inside with the taller, longer Augustama. Downstairs, upstairs, the uppercut, splitting the guard. The only thing Gonzalez, again, I said it earlier, that could get a little bit of a knock for is not taking that little step back sometimes, allowing Augustama to survive by smothering him. As we start round five here, and the undefeated Gonzalez gets right back to the inside, we did notice that there was a left eye cut with Gonzalez just above that left eyebrow. There is a cut that opened up. There's three things that Gonzalez has to do now. He is going a little low with those punches, but you know what? It's either by coincidence he's just lucky or he's pretty smart. Every time the referee's on one side, and he throws something low, Gonzalez, he throws it on the other side, so the referee's not there to see it. A lot of the old-time fighters, that was no accident. Come on, They knew where the referee was at all times, believe me. Some of them were so experienced that they would position themselves to go, the old-timers, near their corner. So when the bell rang, they didn't have to walk over. Stop. You, you right know what they call that fighter nowadays? Great. Bernard Hopkins. Bob. Yeah, he's, he's an experienced one. The one that knows Watch where tricks. that referee is. But the three things I was trying to say that Gonzalez keep your head would keep your head have to pull off to get a knockout here, I believe, is one, continue going to the body, use that uppercut on the inside because Augustama giving up all his height, Stop. leading forward. Great. Come on, don't hold and each other, feet huh? a little bit, Gonzalez. Fox. Take that little step back, and again, don't stop the action by getting smothered. Both men pulled the trigger on right hands that time. Off the mark. There's Gonzalez back to the inside. Had a moment of success. Give credit to Augustama. You know, he's Great. taking much more break, than huh? he's given. Fox. But he's showing heart. But he's fighting, again, the wrong kind of fight in the wrong place. Fighting with heart, as he's showing right here but just in the wrong place in the ring. Should not be inside with that natural height advantage and length advantage, giving it up. Although he's landed a couple good right hands here. He, he just landed a right Stop. hand that right, time right when clean, Gonzalez huh? stepped away and then opened Fox. up. But didn't There's a cut that. I talked about, Joe. You know, we talked about Gonzalez having been cut over his left eye in his last fight. Well, it's opened up now, and we talked about him being cut many times with head clashes. Stop. We don't know if it was the head. Well, we gave that head clash alert, and there it is. There was a report that he was dealing with a cut in the lead-up to this fight. Break. That had mended, but you Break can see here on, the left eye has opened forward. up badly now in round number five. It first started at the end of four, but perhaps the right hand that Augustama was able to land Stop. moments ago Break. has worsened. Break come on. Break. Break. Come on. Box. Ten seconds. So Gonzalez has been controlling, but maybe some concern with that cut above the left eye. We'll take a break and take a peek at it. Stay with us. We have finished, okay? We're working on Brandon Second Gonzalez down, here is what he was told moments ago. Get that stool out of the ring. Come on, let's go. All right, get in your corner. You want to take a look, Dr. Graff? After? All right. Box! Here, Carlos Vargas and Virgil Hunter saying it's just a little nick. Cut in the left eye, obviously a mo little more than that. It was caused by a clash of heads, according to referee Daniel Sandoval. So we're using the California rules, where an accidental foul will go to the scorecards after round four starts. And here we are at the start of round number six. 
And here we are at the limit of August Augustama as far as how far he's gone in the fight in the pros. Six rounds, he's been there six times, but never passed his round. Meanwhile, Gonzalez is coming off back-to-back -back eight round victories in his career. Yeah, Gonzalez has been eight rounds three I'm times. Of that. A reminder coming up in our main event, it's a good looking one. 12 rounds among junior welterweights. Mike Dallas Jr., you see him there. He has come up on ESPN's Friday Night Fight, suffered a couple losses, bounced back with a solid win, and now taking on the 27 win veteran Javier Castro. That's coming up in moments. As we just okay, talked about, it's been rough you, huh? enough for Gustavo. He gets past this round and goes into uncharted territory. Come on, man. That was low. No more, huh? That's a last warning. Box. If he's looking for hope here in a fight where he's way behind August Thomas. Somebody could whisper in his ear maybe that Gonzalez has been on the floor before, has been knocked down in his career. And that's probably what August Thomas needs to hear, because that's what he's going to need to do. Here the corner encouraging August Stamina to let his hands go, but instead it's Gonzalez Break. who was doing work in that red corner while August Stamina was holding on. Box. Most of the fight for August Stamina have been in Florida. The offense is for Gonzalez. Most of his fights, matter of fact, all but one of his fights on the West Coast. Augustama, a Florida-based fighter, started boxing when he was 14 years old. Family came over from Haiti to Miami when he was a child. Again, here's where a little half a step back from Gonzalez. This is something they're going to have to work on. Look at the film and work on it in the gym. Get back to that blackboard after the fight. Learn something. You don't only learn in the ring, you learn outside the ring. That elbow a little in step there, huh? back. Ten seconds. Give yourself a little room sometimes. Just after 6.30 here in Southern California. So folks getting out of work and making the drive east from the L.A. Metropolitan area to show up here at Friday Night Fights. Good crowd now on hand here as they will settle in and get ready for our main event between Castro and Dallas Jr. Let's see how CompuBox sees things so far through round six. The total punches, Gonzalez throwing 425, landing 36% of those. So a clear advantage over Augustana. Again, real bad news if you want to see a comeback for Augustana because we know Gonzalez wins on the inside. Covered that pretty Stop. well, and why? Don't turn around, huh? But on the outside now, Come using on. the jab, Box. where Augustano, you would think, would have an advantage, it's Gonzalez controlling the outside. Augustano has two brothers, Joe, who box, and I wonder if they're going to be yelling at him after this fight and saying, hey, you're tall, you're long, you have these natural gifts given to you. What are you doing on the inside with this guy? I'm sure he's going to be hearing a lot of that. And I'm sure that Gonzalez is going to be hearing it from a different area, a different person, from his wife, Janelle. She's a boxer. They met in the gym. She's probably going to tell him, hey, when you get on the inside, don't smother yourself. Take a half step back. And don't get hit with those right hands, even if they are slapping right hands, as Augustama slaps with that right mitt. But every once in a while, Gonzalez does leave himself open to right hands. He stands straight up, he jab, he won't move. Like that. That time he jabbed, he stepped back straight, gave a little bit of punch room out, punch out of there. for the right hand from Augustama. Brandon and Janelle have two children, 12-year-old son, his name's Seneca, and then a six-year-old daughter, Iana. And he said everything on, they do man. is based around boxing. Don't push his head down and hit him in the back, huh? It's nice that they're able to share that. Be a family with that. If I'm in the corner of August Stama, I'm telling them, concentrate on the right hand. Get a little room at the beginning when you come out there before you get trapped on the ropes. And then start chucking right hands because guess what? We need a knockout. And I'm going to concentrate on that because that's been the only punch I've seen August Stama have any 
affect with or any luck with. Gonzalez touching him with that right uppercut on the inside. You know, you hear the cornerman yelling, and I don't blame him. Let your hands saying, go. Eli, Augustama, let your hands go. But they should also say, Augustama, Eli, get off the ropes. Get on the outside where you have room to let your hands go. Don't do that. Come on. Box. We'll see if he can figure it out. As he will have one round to go seconds, against Gonzalez. Stay with us. Welcome back to Saboba Casino, San Jacinto, California, about an hour good. and a half east of Los Box. Angeles. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas ringside with you for Friday night fights. Eighth and final round between the undefeated Brandon Gonzalez and Augustana, and a clean sweep according to Teddy. So let's see if Augustana can pick up the pace and go for Grove. So far, he was chucking to start this final round. The only round where maybe he was close enough to think about it was maybe the fifth round. Where I thought August Salma got a little room to land a couple right hands, but other than that, I can't see it any other way. And I don't know how the judge is good. Well, there's the ropes. There's the ropes becoming an issue. Remember, we told you right, earlier tonight the ropes, huh? that the ropes were not as tight as the ringside officials would prefer, and that's two times they've been tested by the body of August Salma being pushed through. A couple right hands by Gonzalez got around the left guard of Eli moments ago. And now back to the inside where he's given way all night long. And only one man is winning, truly winning on the inside. That's the man with the short arms. Break, break, clean up. The more physical makeup. The stronger physique. Stop! Come on, stop wrestling in here. The guy who's suited to being on the inside, the man in the blue, Gonzalez. Sweeping right hand, but not much on it. And Gonzalez just clipped him with a left uppercut. And Augustama tries to fire Stop. back. Looked a little Great. awkward on his Great feet there, up. lost his balance. I give Augustama one box. I give him and his credit, him and his corner, I should say, credit for one thing. I thought that they were in a desperate place in this round. They put themselves there by fighting the fight that Augustama fought. But I thought his only shot was to come out winging right hands. And Hands free. He's come out winning some right hands. He is. A couple of uppercuts on the inside from Gonzalez. Tried to chop down with a right hand. I wonder if August Thomas knows how to throw a jab. I mean, I don't Come know on, if he's thrown a handful of jabs all night. Himself, don't Teddy. push I mean, when, when I talk about guys not knowing how to fight on the outside, you could... Oh, he just ate a right hand from Gonzalez. I mean, you could show the picture of August Thomas to illustrate that. The just time. ate an uppercut, too. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a matter of time here. Come That's on, it. Man, don't pull the ropes. Are they calling this? Box, no, he's going to let it continue. Around. Boy, the Box. way Daniel Sandoval stepped in right there, coming off of that punch, he almost gave the impression he was going to call the fight. Yeah, it looked like he did. Puncher, get out of there, hands free, come on. These ropes need to be tightened, Teddy. Look at the Stop. referee actually break. pulling break the white clean, huh? rope. Come on, break. Because he was worried about Augustama going Ten through seconds. that time. Box. But I think the wear and tear of this one fight Stop. alone loosened those yeah. ropes even more. Come on, get up. Box. Ah. Fortunately, they will have time before the main event to adjust the ring as Gonzalez will soon be celebrating the 16th win of his career. Teddy's going to be talking Chavez Jr. and Sergio Martinez down the road. Stay with us. ESPN Friday Night Fights presented by Corona Extra is brought to you by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Nice area to take a Jeep out for a ride here in the mountainous desert region of the Inland Empire. As we are in San Jacinto, California, Teddy's card goes 80 to 71 as Gonzalez came on strong there in the eighth round, dominating from the start as he looks for the 16th win of his career to hear how the judges had it. We send it up to Barry Egan. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a big round of applause for these two amazing warriors.
San Jacinto to the scorecards we go. All three judges, Ray Corona, Pat Connolly, and Mr. Zachary Young, scored about 80 to 72 for the winner by unanimous decision and still undefeated Brandon Flawless Gonzalez. Brandon Gonzalez, now 16-0-1, trained by Virgil Hunter, the trainer of the year. And Augustama falls to 6-5. Clean sweep, 80-72 for Gonzalez.